we present a case of an endoscopic closure of a colocutaneous rectal fistula. The authors have nothing to disclose. Colocutaneous fistula is a known but rare complication of diverticular disease. Much of the existing literature involves small case series. However, they are conventionally managed with laparotomy, excision of the fistula tract, and bowel resection. There are several case reports demonstrating successful closure of colocutaneous fistula with endoscopic clipping. A 75-year-old female initially presented with sigmoid diverticulitis with a contained perforation and abscess. She was initially managed with an IR drain and then underwent an exploratory laparotomy with loop colostomy. Initially, the postoperative course was complicated by large intra-abdominal abscesses requiring multiple IR drains and eventually re-exploration for washout, resection of the loop colostomy, and end colostomy formation. She subsequently developed another intra-abdominal abscess requiring drain placement. She was admitted three weeks later and underwent exploratory laparotomy, lysis of adhesions, sigmoid resection, and a small bowel resection. Her postoperative course was again complicated by abscesses, and she had IR drains placed in both the right and left lower quadrants. She was discharged, and her left lower quadrant drain was removed as an outpatient in clinic. However, she was readmitted with a colocutaneous fistula. She was then placed on conservative management with NPO, TPN, and antibiotics and was transferred to our center. Initial CT imaging with IV contrast and gastrographin injected into the right lower quadrant drain was performed. This demonstrated contrast filling a right lower quadrant abscess as well as contrast filling the Hartman's pouch and the ascending colon. These findings were consistent with a colocutaneous, rectocutaneous, and colorectal fistula. We felt that the sequel involvement was likely iatrogenic due to one of her many right lower quadrant drain placements. Given the patient's complex and recent surgical history, the decision was made to attempt endoscopic closure of the fistula. We began by advancing our standard gastroscope per rectum into the rectal stump. There is obvious breakdown on the right side of the rectal stump. Note the extra luminal error outlined in red. A suture foreign body was also noted at this site. There was communication into an adjacent space presumed to be the pelvic abscess. The existing IR drain, shown with a blue arrow, appears to be in communication with the abscess. We then turned our attention to the colocutaneous fistula and used a colonoscope to advance the scope through the stoma until we reached her cecum. We were unable to definitively identify the colonic fistula, so contrast was injected through the IR drain. This was shown to demonstrate a serpiginous tract to the base of the cecum that was remote from the ileocecal valve. The fistula tract is seen here identified by the small arrows filling the cecum as well as the cavity, which is identified by the large arrow. We used APC cautery to fulgurate the overlying mucosa to allow better healing after endoscopic closure. Again, the fistula tract is identified by the arrow. After this, we removed our colonoscope and applied a 14T Ovesco clip and advanced through the stoma and back to the cecum. The clip was positioned over the fistula tract and fired. This was done using fluoroscopic guidance so as not to inadvertently close the ileocecal bowel wall. Both were intact with good position of the clip after firing. Contrast was again injected through the drain, and this time there is no contrast seen in the colon. We then turned our attention to the colocutaneous fistula. The jag wire is advanced through the cutaneous portion of the fistulous tract. It was monitored on fluoroscopy and noted to enter the pericolonic abscess cavity. Using Seldinger technique, a 10 French Blake drain was advanced over the wire through the colocutaneous tract into the pericolonic abscess for additional drainage. This was secured to the skin with suture. We then turned our attention to the rectal stump. An XP endoscope was traversed through the fistulous tract in the abscess cavity under fluoroscopic guidance. The cavity was lavaged. A grasper was used to reposition our percutaneously placed drain superiorly in the pericolonic abscess. Both drains were visualized through the endoscope and were noted to be in good position. The previously noted proline suture was endoscopically removed. While the scope was directly visualizing the cavity through the rectum, drains were injected and no contrast was seen in the cecum on fluoroscopy. Because the fecal side was closed and there would be no further fecal stream, we decided to leave this open to allow it to drain with a plan for future evaluation and potential endoscopic back placement. The patient did well postoperatively. 
The drain output cleared up and remained serous even after the patient's diet was advanced. She was ultimately discharged home. A follow-up endoscopy was performed approximately three weeks later with no evidence of perforation of the rectal stump or in the cecum. The patient was tolerating a diet, gaining weight, and had no pain for the first time in three years. Her drain was removed in clinic, and she passed the Ovesco clip about 1.5 months after the endoscopic clipping. In conclusion, endoscopic clipping is a safe and effective option for definitive management of colonic fistula in the appropriate patient.